Monday's market closes higher in livestock mixed in the grains. Pat Bonchurch with Professional Ag Marketing is joining us uh, to visit about the day. And let's talk a little bit about uh, the livestock futures first. Cattle have been holding together real well with especially this outside market in recessionary environment. environment. Do you think we're going to be able to keep holding on here, especially if cash trade continues to be firmed up? Well, the cattle market has performed admirably uh, relative to the stock market here recently, hasn't it, Michelle? Hey, you know, we're, you know, we've got all kinds of negative influences that, that could be potentially impacting negatively this cattle market, and it's hanging in there with some pretty uh, uh, astounding resiliency, if you will. And so, you know, we'll see what happens with cash as we start to get through the middle of this week here, but we've recently had you know, box beef values trade uh, at its lowest level since April of 2021, uh, but beef production and beef production was up uh, 2 point uh, two and a half percent numbers wise, production wise about 1.7 percent higher last week, as a result of a little bit lighter market weights, which would certainly be a suggestion of a of a feeder that's uh, pretty current here, and maybe that's what's uh, holding this cash market. But it sure feels to me, Michelle, like we have some pretty firm undertone to what's going on from a meat demand perspective. I think we're particularly seeing that on the pork side of things, where uh, this pork complex uh, harvested over 2.5 million last week. <clears throat> it looks as though we're going to have a pretty good Saturday uh, coming up this week. And so in spite of, of historically tighter packer margins, there still seems to be some pretty good demand for for pork here and so you know coming up here october is pork month uh and uh we've also had above normal temps that have maybe slowed down um, marketing just a little bit here but it'll be interesting to see how the next two weeks play out so since you mentioned hogs uh the lean hog index looks like it's bottom so now will the futures the back months december on back try to chase that or not uh, just a little bit. It'll be interesting. We've got, uh, I mean, for the first time, the index and nearby futures, October futures, have have uh, aligned themselves. There's been a, a significant spread in that market for an extended period of time here. And so for the first time in a while, we've got kind of spot fundamentals aligning up with spot futures and really spreads from October forward that are closer to normal than we've been in quite some time. And so in order for uh, us to spur a rally in the deferreds there, it's probably going to take a, a little bit uh, firmer spot fundamentals. And so what will really tell the story here, I think, Michelle, is over the next couple of weeks, whether or not we get into a few more hog numbers, which is what I anticipate. So when I look at that December contract trading awfully close to its contract highs and this close to it becoming the lead month, that looks like a pretty good opportunity for hedgers to me. Okay. What about the back end of the live cattle board? You know, we have cracked some new contract highs. Front end of the board kind of keeps running up into resistance. But are you hedging in the back end as well with anticipation of tighter numbers ahead or not? You know, there's uh, um, an awful lot of volatility in all of these markets. And so when we have the opportunity to, to lock up in some cases, which is uh, uh, not too bad of a margin, even in those de deferred uh, time slots for these for these cattle feeders, we're taking a pretty serious look at it. Uh, you know, there's uh, the great experiment of, uh, of money print and now the corresponding uh, um, um, reaction from the Fed, Michelle, is, is, is something that none of us have experienced in any of our careers. And so to, uh, to be able to anticipate how good demand can hold in here, especially domestically, but also abroad, that's a big question, a big challenge, and I think a little bit too much risk for carrying inventory there. So we certainly are taking a look at those opportunities and deferreds. Cash cattle trade, do you anticipate we'll have another firmer week like we did last week or not? I think we will. I think the Packer's interested in getting a little bit more supply around him. I, I think he's willing to, to make a little bit of a bet here from these levels that he should be building some inventory going into the holiday season. So my guess is, is that we'll see some, some pretty uh, uh, firm to slightly higher trade this week. And corn and soybeans held up really well on Monday considering wheat had double-digit losses and some of the outside market factors. What held it up? And, or did we just kind of bounce off those 100-day moving averages technically? Yeah, I'm not sure how much of, uh, of today's trade is, is early yield reports, but uh, uh, today's trade 
sort of acted the what I've been hearing as it relates to early yield reports. Uh, you know, the, the the very early yield reports that we've heard on beans have been a little disappointing. Certainly more mixed on the corn side of things all across the growing region. And I I hesitate to make too big a deal out of that this early in the game, Michelle. But uh, um, we'll see how that goes. And I think the market's going to be pretty sensitive to to how we feel about supply side, especially a week plus after um, the USDA numbers that came out last week. So I think a lot of it is, is market trying to position itself uh, as it relates to uh, a bias on, on U.S. Uh, production here. Uh, certainly technically holding some of those uh, longer-term averages help as well. Absolutely. Do you anticipate because of the tighter numbers that we got in the USDA report that we're going to see that strong cash basis continue and especially at harvest like it was last year? I do, and I, I think that's true on both corn and soybeans, particularly in the western corn belt. I think it's going to be awfully hard to to uh, to get this uh, to get this uh, harvest to move at a fast enough pace um, to, to to for anyone to feel uncomfortable as it relates to managing their space situation. And so, you know, there was some um, I suppose threat of of wider basis levels uh, during gut slot harvest last week. We were concerned about rail strikes and. Uh, in particular, but I I think uh, now uh, um, the chances of, of basis widening out, the risk of that from the producer's perspective, I think is pretty slim. All right, we appreciate your time. Thanks so much. That is Pat Von Tersch with Professional Ag Marketing.